So, hola. That's about it. Boy, it's hot here in Pere. It's a very hot place. You know why it's hot? Because you have 10 years of being hot. This is a community that has a new idea that has inspired others around the world. I know because in 2005, I met the then mayor and his delegation in New York City when we acknowledged Pirai as the intelligent community as part of the top seven in the world because they used and applied technology in very positive ways. And you've been doing that for 10 years. So I have a couple of little messages and some big ideas that I'm going to talk about today. One, there is no such thing as a small idea. Two, especially if it's a good idea because money follows ideas. And there is no such place to be too remote or too small to have good ideas, especially if you're now able to be connected to high-speed broadband anywhere in the world. Also, I believe that you have to take those small ideas and think bigger and make something of those ideas and share them with the rest of the world. And one of the ways to do that is, in fact, to do a thing called creating a smart city. A smart city is something that is very important to do. But I really think you have to think bigger and you're going to have to become an intelligent community. And that's part of what I'll be talking about this afternoon. So what is a smart city? Well, cities all over the world, their administrations, their public sector, but also working with the universities and the private sector, they're trying to make better things out of the assets that they have in their communities. Obviously, costs have risen. Cities all over the world are costing a lot more money. They've grown, doubled, tripled in size, but they are flat in terms of their budgets. So what they've done is they've identified opportunities to create data, metrics, from the infrastructure that they have. And as a result of that, big data, let's call it, they've been able to analyze it and come up with better ideas, better processes that makes their cities better. In the meantime, what's happened is these cities have also become part of a global society and are competing globally. And by differentiating themselves with this smart idea, they're able to attract foreign direct investment, but also talent. And then the other idea is they have to keep it. They have to keep that investment and keep that talent in their communities. And it is big business. Holy smokes, Batman, it's worth a trillion dollars. Within the next year, you're going to see more and more of these smart cities. And why? There are all these processes in place. Smart technologies, smart health, smart education, smart homes. You probably have a, a smart TV in your home. And everybody from Intel to IBM to Cisco, all of these different companies, they're all getting involved in this big business. And they're calling it by their city names. And they're getting involved with all the vendors. I just came from China. I'm working with the Chinese government. They're looking at building 200 smart cities in China, 58 in India, and hundreds more in places like Europe, Middle East, here in Brazil, and elsewhere in the United States and Canada. But does it matter? I really think it does because when you take assets and you try to do something with them that you know, you're doing more with less, as Mies van der Rohe would have said, you're actually creating new ways of doing things, better ways of doing things, creating evidence-based decision-making, which creates smarter assets, smarter decisions. But is it a revolution? No, it's not a revolution. What it is, is it's creating infrastructure. Good infrastructure, but it's infrastructure. And these smart cities, some of them are bought in a box. They are useful. They're useful to become an intelligent community. And what's the difference? I think what it is, it's about being holistic. It's about looking at the city and the region and your community in many more ways than just infrastructure. So, you want to be a smart city? Build good infrastructure. You want to become an intelligent community? Do all these other things that I'm listing right now. And what they're really all about, sort of a secret sauce, 
is you take that smart city idea and you add all the intellectual capital that you can to it and then create. When you have a smart person and you have smart infrastructure, now you can develop innovation, creativity, and share it with the rest of the community through digital inclusion. And we have a, in Rio a really terrific example of digital inclusion. And then you create good public policy. And then you advocate and market and add the sustainability inputs. Now you've got an intelligent community. But you don't stop there. You have to collaborate. You have to be synergistic as a community. Ensure that your leadership is well positioned. And then create what we call excellence in governance. Because if you do, then you create a really terrific ecosystem in that community. When you have a terrific ecosystem, you're going to attract investment. You're going to attract the talent. And more importantly, you'll retain it. Now, intelligent communities. These are the kinds of communities that understand the impact of broadband. And here in uh, this community, you have created a terrific example of what that means. You've made conscious efforts here in this community to create an ecosystem that really responds to the technology and capabilities, and you'll be able to prosper as a result. You recognize what that impact means in terms of your youth, your children who are able then to create a culture that will be able to grow up as if technology was second to none as part of their activity, their daily activity. They'll create a high quality of life and lots of jobs and opportunities in this community as a result. They're not afraid to use the technology in everything, from operations, but also to urban planning. Good urban planning means you can learn what intensification means, good land uses and so forth. So that is an important part of it. But you can also use it to learn to take advantage of the traditional ways of life that you have here and grow new ideas based on that. So I'm speaking about creating a new ecosystem entirely, creating this culture of use, and as a result, creating opportunities that everyone will benefit from. So what is this all about? Well, we're talking about the Internet of Things. Actually, it's the Internet of Everything. We are able to transform our communities we're able to do things that we were never able to do before. And it's important for us to recognize that this transformation occurs because everything connects to everything else. You can't make a change today that isn't going to impact something else later. So we at the Intelligent Community Forum have for years used this criteria to establish what these intelligent communities are about. We look at a virtuous circle that talks about being a smart city intelligent, smart cities are start off with infrastructure. They then work with education, and that's what we are doing here in this community today. When you have smart people and smart infrastructure, I told you, you're able then to create and innovate, and that's where the resources and the money flow. Good ideas. Well, we're now also talking about digital inclusion, bringing everybody together who have those ideas and finally, we talk about marketing and advocacy, promoting your community to the world to attract investment and talent. We have 126 cities around the world, including this community right here, as part of the intelligent community movement. Your city was created as part of the family of intelligent communities in 2005. Well, we're now at 126 of these cities. Hundreds, 400 a year get uh, come to our communities of interest and talk to us about becoming part of an intelligent community. Only 21 uh, become an intelligent community each year. This year, Rio joined, joined the family. So how do you start? I think you do start as a smart community. What you do is you uh, put in the infrastructure, you put in the metrics, you learn to become uh, part of this big data analysis and then learn about better operations and good planning. You can save money by doing this and then put that money into other things. In Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, they in fact did that. In Cambridge, they saved $100,000 and put it into new things. Up the street in another community as part of the Waterloo region, the city of Waterloo, 
there's a university there that has an intellectual property policy that if the student and the professors own, uh, have the, the intellectual property that comes out of the university, they actually get to keep it. They own it. The university doesn't, uh, doesn't deal with it. Well, companies like BlackBerry, OpenText, Desire to Learn, and many others have come out of that system and have become multinational companies. They've given back to the community. So, for instance, the, the creator, the inventor of the BlackBerry has put money into a, a, through, a, through a process into what is called the Perimeter Institute. And the Perimeter Institute has attracted people like Stephen Hawking to come to their community. It also has attracted uh, Chris Hadfield, who just recently was in outer space, to come and be part of the uh, professors at the, at the university. And there are organizations like Communitech, Canadian Digital Media Network, and Canada's Technology Triangle that promote uh, all around the world to attract the investment and attract the talent. Another city is Eindhoven, Holland. Eindhoven had a very unique situation with Philips as its homegrown company. Unfortunately, as it grew, it also needed to go and relocate in Amsterdam. That created a crisis for Eindhoven. Eindhoven then went with its leadership, pulled together, collaborated, and created a new organization with the university, with the private sector, called Brainport. And Brainport has adapted ideas such as open innovation to create opportunities to attract investment and to attract talent. It has since, in the last 10 years, created tens of thousands of new jobs because this crisis pulled the community together and the leadership was able to develop this organization called Brainport. That is a smart idea. They've since been able to develop other industry sectors and they're working with groups like the City of Waterloo and with Taipei through a triangle and they're looking at ways in which they can benefit as a result. Taichung Taiwan, current intelligent community of the year. You've probably never heard of it, but this is a city that not only started off as a smart city, but then took its civic mindset and said, ah, there's more to it than just science and technology, more to it than just infrastructure. In fact, it has attracted culture and heritage and other kinds of opportunities to their community. The Life of Pi, the movie that Ang Lee made, was created in Taichung, not in Hollywood. It has attracted movie stars and rock stars. The leadership has turned it around to create opportunities for opera and for other kinds of arts to come to that community. This is important because I said, not only are you able to attract investment as a result, but you have to keep it. And Tai Chung understands that, so it has broadened its horizons as a result. And finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about Rio. In my several visits to Rio, I've been able to learn a little bit that here's an example of the gap between the rich and the poor. This is an idyllic scene that you see on the screen. Beautiful beaches, uh, well-manicured sidewalks and streets, very expensive condominiums. On the other side, you have the favelas. So here is a story of the rich and the poor and how to bring them together. And one of the ways, and the only way that I've seen as great an example in digital inclusion as this one is in Rio. Rio has these things called knowledge squares. I believe there are eight of them now. And when uh, my colleagues took me through, they were able to show me that here was a place where the poor and the rich were able to come together and play with the kinds of tools of, of the broadband society that we are today. By all of us taking advantage of broadband, taking advantage of the internet, taking advantage of the kinds of science and technology that's, that's available to them, if it's accessible and if it's affordable, everyone can participate. Remember, there is no idea that's too small. There is no idea in a location that's too remote if it's a good idea, as long as it can be shared. Because if it can be shared, then what we'll have is prosperity and wealth. And we hope that through this example in Rio, those people who have 
in the past not had an opportunity for a job, they'll be able to learn how to read, write, use the equipment of today for tomorrow, and be able to do the things that are necessary to, for prosperity and, and, uh, and wealth and happiness in their communities. It's the kids. This whole exercise is about the future. It's about our children. And if we can give our children the opportunity of access to the internet, access to good ideas, and access for opportunities to succeed, we will all succeed together. Rio, Taichung, Waterloo, Eindhoven, these are only four out of 126 communities that are examples for the world. We use these communities to inspire others. Your community is one of the 126. Your community is inspiring others because of what you've been able to achieve. The Intelligent Community Forum has written about this. It has a website and it teaches communities all over the world and uses your community as one of the examples. And we think that by working together and allowing people to be sharing these good ideas, no matter how remote you might feel you are or how small your idea may be, it is actually a big idea. Thank you very much. Abrigado. Yeah.